Hey guys, it's Noah, and this is the Hidden Comments for the week of April 30th, 2014. So, as you guys can see, I'm flying solo this week because, well, crap happened to the comic book guy, and he unfortunately couldn't join me. But, you know what? The show must go on. So this week, I've got a couple of treats for you from Archie. It's Mega Man issue 35 with the Mega Man X variant cover featuring our old pal Zero who appears to be slashing some poor maverick in half. So, spoiler alert, that doesn't act, we don't actually see that happen in the issue, so that kind of sucks, but there is a surprise cameo from someone else within the Mega Man X universe, but we'll get to that. And also, from IDW, it's Transformers Windblade number one, part of the new John the Autobots event. So we'll start with Transformers, more than meets the eye. So, in Windblade number one, we meet Windblade, who is actually the first fan-built bot in the Transformers franchise. The fans voted on her design, and she became incorporated into the comics and soon the Generations toy line. So look for her figure this fall, I guess, because Hasbro just canceled two waves and pushed them back to a later release. Because have some crappy movie toys. I don't know. Anyway. Windblade is now the keeper of Metroplex and is trying to help repair the Titan, who is the last surviving city on Cybertron. Meanwhile, Starscream and Rattrap are trying to repair Iacon, and it appears that Windblade and Starscream aren't getting along. But then again, nobody really gets along with Starscream, because Starscream's kind of a douche. A lovable douche, but still a douche. And pretty much Windblade finds that out when she heads down to Boar's Bar and has a talk with some of Starscream's old enemies and even his friends. And we get some nice cameos from Waspinator and Swindle, Slag, uh, Tankor, both Tankors. <laughs> it's pretty funny. And even Skybite's there, but he, again, he doesn't say anything. I felt he was kind of wasted during Dark Cybertron, and he's kind of wasted here. And, I mean, come on, Skybite was one of my favorite characters, one of everybody's favorite characters from Robots in the Sky, the cartoon, so you think they'd make more use of him. But, you know, at least Waspinator gets a line of dialogue not even that funny. But whatever, I'm nitpicking. This is actually a really good issue. The main focus is Windblade's character. She's new to the Transformers universe, and her backstory is basically that she comes from a different shoot-off planet of Cybertron called Kamian, and she dreamt of basically Cybertron being this grand empire that it once was, but now it's kind of a crap hole. And that's mainly because, well, Dark Cybertron happened. And Optimus Prime is nowhere to be seen in this issue, and neither is Megatron, who's an Autobot now? Really, he's got the Autobot symbol on him in the opening page. So, um, I guess they finally settled their differences. Um, if only the Middle East could do the same thing. Oh well, I guess that's just wishful thinking. Overall, if you're interested in Windblade and her character, or if you just want to keep up with the Transformers comics that are out right now, I definitely suggest you go out and buy this now. I mean, $3.99, yeah, but, you know, that's IDW standard price. And it's actually a pretty good book. Windblade's an interesting character, and I can't wait to see more of her. So, here's hoping that her toy sells well, too, when it eventually does come out, Hasbro. I'm sorry, I just really can't stand those guys sometimes. They're like the diamond of toy companies. I'm saying they're bad distributors, people. Can I badmouth diamond on the air? Yeah, I can. Uh, Mega Man, issue 35. So, second part of both the X Factor, the backup story leading to the Dawn of X crossover in issue 37 coming up, and issue 36 is available now in the stands, like one week after this one came out, so they're heading towards the X crossover. And it's also the second part of Raw, of the Shadow of Raw Moon, after the Curse of Raw Moon, where that giant alien basically caused a blackout on the Earth, and Mega Man killed him. And that's exactly where we pick up, with Mega Man, Roll, Feral Man, Plant Man, Dr. Light, Cossack, and um, Dr. Light's friend Pedro investigating the ruins. Turns out that Pedro's crew had investigated them once before, but they all ended up dead except for him. Really, they don't even, like, dance around it. They outright say his crew died during the investigation the first time. So, wow. Uh, it's a kid's comic. Actually, it's it's not because it's becoming more and more of a 
comic, not so much in the violence department, but in the just the storytelling. It's very, very mature. Like, we get questions in this issue with uh, Tempo, aka Quake Woman, and Proto Man discussing, well, why do you stick with Doctor Lin Tempo after you know she erased your memories after you got caved in that one time? And she's like, well, gee, I trust her. I mean, she's showing remorse, and you're just kind of being a douche because Doctor Light. Do you think he replaced you when he just built Mega Man and Roll in the hopes that when you came home, you'd have a brother and sister? And again, Proto Man is way more developed here. In fact, every character here is more developed than they are in the games, but there's only so much you could do with NES cartridge limits at the time, I suppose. Now, Proto Man, it's interesting to see his character, because what we know from the games is Dr. Light and Dr. Wily built him as their first robot. He ran away, joined Dr. Wily, and then betrayed him and is now and then became part of Mega Man's crew off and on. So, we're figuring that out more and more, because Proto Man seems to have still an affection for Dr. Light, but he's not ready to admit that he forgives them, and he may never be, because even if they're robots, you know, they're still people in a way, and forgiveness, trust me, can take a long time for some people. But, you know, it's definitely a good issue. Uh, it's very thought-provoking, it's a wonderful read, and I'm glad that Ian Flynn and Spazante and crew are really stepping up with the storytelling. This is really becoming one of the best comics in the industry. You have to start picking it up. I mean, if you're a Mega Man fan, you're already reading this, at least I hope you are. But if you're not, you better start. Uh, and part two of the X Factor, the main feature. <laughs> I don't want to undermine the regular comic, but everybody's pretty pumped about X finally being in print. We see that Mega Man X is kind of dealing with the grim future. Uh, the Reploids are starting to show irregular behavior and they're becoming the Mavericks. And of course, Dr. Kane decides, well, let's introduce a police force. And so we have the Maverick Hunters with cameos from some Mega Man X2 and X3 bosses. And I won't give them away. And of course, we meet the big bad himself, Sigma. But he's not the bad guy, yet but we get a pretty good inclination about what's happening to him. He's already starting to separate the Reploids and the humans into an us and them kind of mindset. Basically, the corruption's setting in, and the future's about to grow even darker. And X is none the wiser, unfortunately, but he soon will be. He doesn't want to be a hunter, but pretty soon he'll be forced into it, which is exactly what he says in the comic. I don't want to be forced into a position to have to kill anyone. But you're going to have to, because that's what heroes do, man. At least in Dark Futures they do. If you don't believe me, just go read any X-Men book that takes place in the future. Or any X-Men book that takes place currently. Anyway, definitely go out and buy this now. Uh, the x off crossover is going to be amazing. Uh, the storytelling is just getting better and better. And really, this is a comic that if you haven't been following it, now is the time you have to get in on this. And I know I said that during Worlds Collide and during previous story arcs, but really, you have to start reading this. It's one of the best comics, in my personal opinion, out there, and you definitely should donate your time and your money towards it. It's a great book, people. And Transformers, too, is a great book. There's, you know, there, there's more than just the big two. You don't have to just dedicate your time to Marvel and DC. I mean, there's so many other great books out there, and I should probably stop this before I rant again. But, you know what, take it from me, the little companies sometimes put out the better stuff. So, with that being said, I'm Noah, and I'll see you guys next time. And happy free comic book day, everybody.